Are we living in a simulation? Honestly, this concept has been around for quite a while. You know, movies like The Matrix showing humans living in some kind of virtual reality. There was even that movie called The 13th Floor before that. But recently, it's gotten pretty famous, especially when big shots like Elon Musk started talking about it. It might sound like a joke or something out of a sci-fi movie, right? But actually, it's a topic that serious experts from various fields, from philosophy to theoretical physics, have been discussing quite seriously. It even came up at the annual Isaac Asimov commemorative debate held at the American Museum of Natural History. First off, there's Nick Bostrom's 2003 paper, Are You Living in a Computer Simulation? which gained quite a bit of fame. The idea is that as civilization advances to an extreme level, it might become possible to create almost perfect simulations. So, in the highly advanced future, there's no reason why the post-humans wouldn't create simulations, either for fun or for experimentation. So, there's a possibility that we're living in a simulation created by these highly advanced post-humans. I'm simplifying it a bit, but basically, he's suggesting the possibility that we're in a simulation. Now, from a scientific perspective rather than a philosophical one, can we find evidence that we're living in a simulated world? Actually, there's still no definite physical evidence either way. But as physics progresses, a lot of people have been raising questions. When you think about it, there are a lot of pretty strange things happening in the universe that we can't really explain with common sense. Let's say, for example, the question, why is the speed of light finite? Light is the fastest thing in the universe, right? But its speed is limited. Ultimately, it means there's a maximum speed we can reach, already set in stone. So, why is this a big deal? Well, because the maximum speed of the fastest light in the universe is finite, it also means the universe we can observe is limited. We call this the observable universe, and it's roughly about 46.5 light years in radius. I'll dive into the details later, but for now, let's keep it simple. The universe we can see goes up to a maximum of 46.5 light years. Beyond that, we can't see or reach. It's all because of the universe expanding and the finite speed of light. Scientists agree that the universe is much larger than what we can observe. So, if the universe is so vast, why are we restricted from going there? Some say it's to conserve resources. Just like when making a game, setting a maximum value is crucial. It's like setting a maximum level. In simulations, setting a maximum speed like this saves the infinite resources that we can reach. Since we're on the topic of resources, how about another story? If you're watching this channel, you've probably heard of quantum mechanics at least once. The famous Schrodinger's cat, right? Before observation, the state of the cat being alive and dead exists simultaneously, and it's only when observed that it decides. It's a scientific fact that's hard to grasp, right? Some argue it's another piece of evidence that this world is a simulation. Think about it like a game. You don't need to render parts the player doesn't see, right? You don't need to render what's behind you when you're looking forward. Just render it when you or another player sees it. In an open world game, rendering the entire game world would make it impossible to play on most computers, right? Similarly, if the universe is a simulation before observation, it exists probabilistically and only becomes definite upon observation. Pretty convincing, isn't it? There's been this one problem that's been bothering scientists for ages when it comes to quantum mechanics. Relativity theory is almost beautifully proven on its own, and quantum mechanics is also solidly backed up by scientific experiments. But the problem is, when you try to merge them in the microscopic world, they clash. So scientists are itching to find a theory that encompasses both, but it's been a bit of a struggle. One proposed solution to this is that in the universe, there's a minimum unit, so dealing with anything smaller in the microscopic world doesn't make sense. It's like pixels we use all the time. You can have one pixel, but you can't have half a pixel. In modern science, not only is there a minimum length, but there's also a minimum mass and even a minimum time. And get this, time isn't continuous. It's like the display on a digital clock or pixels, it's discrete. Pretty mind-boggling, isn't it? And there's a lot more where that came from. If you're curious about anything, drop a comment.